Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Today I want to touch a very interesting topic. eh? There has been a very delusional interpretation of something I've had so commonly spoken in the church of Jesus Christ. (laughs) It's even funny when I think about it. And uh, there's a title that has been conferred on some individuals in the church. And it's called Prayer Warrior. (laughs) In its own, it's not wrong to be a prayer warrior. Say, let's go to a certain woman of God. And majority of the prayer warriors are actually women. Because they have time to tarry. (laughs) How many of you know that? That many of the prayer warriors, you know, you know those special mamas who they are not submitted to anyone. They don't go to any church. They are prophetesses in their own right. They lock themselves up in rooms. And then a friend comes and tells you, Ha! I saw a certain woman. eh? She's a prayer warrior. Let's go and visit her. She will tell you. So you appear like you've gone to a witch doctor. Eh? Some people have gone to witch doctors. There's, there's, a, there's a certain prayer, there's a woman, she's a prayer warrior. When you enter her house, eh, even her eyes look like she has been praying. <laughs> they hear the spirit. They are prophetesses in their own right. They see in the spirit. They know God. They, they design things, you know. So many of those, they usually live in houses, separate houses of their own. 99% of the prayer warriors are single. And you go to them to pray for you, (laughs) to get a man. (laughs) Balokola interesting. Somebody say Balokola interesting. But am I making sense? So there's a bunch of those Women, eh? they are not bad people, but they have a few warning signs. One, like I said, they don't submit to anyone. They only submit themselves to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has not led them. They don't do anything. They don't talk to anybody. You can even come and they say, you, I'm not going to pray for you. You understand? You, there's something on you that I can't pray. First go and do this and that and that. And when you do that, I'll pray for you. You know that? And when you're not submitted to spiritual authority... (laughs) It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Things start falling apart, like Chinua Achebe said. You know? Number two, many of them are praying for people for results they don't have. You understand what I'm saying? So you're stuck, but they're prophetic. They see in the spirit. Have you wondered why many prophetesses are not married? There's a problem. Some of them are not really the married kind. Some of them is just some poor. And not all are women. There are also men who are prayer warriors. Is it wrong to be a prayer warrior? No. Is the title conferred on those people or anybody to be called to be a prayer warrior wrong? It's not wrong. But you see, many of us have coined this understanding of prayer warrior in a very deceived understanding of who a prayer warrior is. So the problem is not the title. The problem is not the act of prayer warrior. No, 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 no. You are supposed to be, you and I are supposed to be prayer warriors. Right? But it's not a special group of people that are ordained to be prayer warriors. That, that calling, you look at the fivefold, look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there is no gift called prayer. Hello, huh? There is no gift called what? Prayer. There's gifts of healing, gifts of prophecy, gifts of understanding mysteries, all of those things. And then there's fivefold ministry where there's apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, prophets, and all the perfecting the saints for the work of ministry, education, everybody. The fivefold ministry exists 
and the gifts of the Holy Spirit exist and the fruit of the Spirit exists. But look at the fruit of the Spirit. Look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Look at the fivefold ministry, the offices. You're not going to find anything called prayer warrior. You understand? Because there's no such calling for a special designated group of people with extra grace to pray. You understand? It is just a word that is conferred and it's supposed to be actually the responsibility of every Christian. But it has been put in the hands of special holy. So there's a woman for me who prays for me. Some of you, you even have a group of women who pray for you, a certain group. And men don't do that many. They are there, broke guys. But it usually happens, usually happens, usually happens with women. Praise God. I hope you're not taking offense in this. Eh? I'm speaking the truth in love that you might grow up in all things. You understand? Because some of you, you're wasting time in things that don't make sense. So, I want to define the intercession of a prayer warrior. What it means to be a prayer warrior. The true understanding of a prayer warrior. You're not going to look for one because you're one. <laughs> Hello? You're one. You're one. Let me show you a few special things about this intercessor. The spirit that intercedes. The spirit of the intercessor. The prayer warrior. Or you the person who is interceding for others. You know, one, it tells us to intercede for all the saints across the world. The Bible, it's clear that we're supposed to be praying for all the saints. He says, I exhort you therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all men, that is kings, people who lead you, all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. But also, there is another part of intercession, a scripture where he says, intercede for all the saints. Ephesians 6, 18. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication, the spirit watching thereof, and to all perseverance and supplications for all saints. So, God has called you to pray for all believers. Is it for special men of God and prayer warriors? Munziremu? No. And then he has said, after praying for all men, you're supposed to be praying for all saints. You're supposed to be praying for fellow Christians. All the people you know that are believers in the Lord. You're supposed to be praying for them. But am I making sense? There are people who, they, don't, they just don't pray for people. They just don't pray for saints. They don't pray for believers across the world. They don't pray for the church. They don't pray for the president. They don't pray for the prime ministers. They don't pray for our lawyers, our judiciary, our legislative system. They don't pray for our executive. They don't pray for their local councils. They don't pray for their local leaders. They don't pray for fellow saints in the church. They don't pray. They don't pray. They just don't pray. Every time they go in the prayers of God, it's me, me, God help me, 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 me. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm a star. I'm shining. I'm the light. You understand? And then you stay like that. The number one proof of maturity and adulthood is taking responsibility of the things that you believe are appointed to you. For responsibility. Saints, we have a very big responsibility that some of you, because of maturity, have not entered into. It's really a maturity issue. The Bible says in Psalms, Ask ye me of nations for an inheritance, for your inheritance. Your inheritance is nations. Your inheritance is not what your father left when he died. Are you hearing me? Your inheritance is what? Is nations. There's a huge responsibility that you have toward the nations of the world and the course of the politics, the joyous systems, the social, and every other thing that is happening in the nations of the world. The Bible says that the foundations of the world are out of course. The men know not and understand not. They are gods. And because they walk in darkness, 
The foundations of the earth are out of course. The people who God has given responsibility to fix the earth are walking in darkness. And darkness means ignorance. And because of ignorance, the foundations of the earth are out of course. The world is out of course. The earth is out of course. Because people like you and I have not understood the divine responsibility that you have towards nations. That is why they deny you visas. I know you won't say amen there. Some of you, that's why they, some of you, not all of you, but some of you, that's why they deny you visas. Because you don't enter these nations with responsibility. You enter them with need. You enter them with desperacy. You enter them seeking for solution. Yet you're supposed to enter these nations giving solutions. You're not supposed to enter them asking them questions. You're supposed to enter those nations answering them. Whether you go as an employee in a company X in Dubai or that the Lord is will ordain you one day to go to the United States, it shall be by responsibility and purpose. You're not going to go there to seek answers. You're going to go there to give answers because you are an answer. Somebody shout hallelujah. It has weighed on my heart how some of us have failed to appreciate the responsibility that we have towards nations. The responsibilities of us as a ministry to the world, I have been praying for many of you, all of you actually since, that you grasp this thing, okay? That you get it. That you get it. We're gonna have what, if not the biggest, one of the biggest ministries on the face of the earth. You watch. You watch. How many of you have seen it in the spirit. I needed only one witness, but I have more than one. And that's beautiful. So, some of you are seated listening to me. Years or later, I'm going to remind you, your pastors of tens of thousands. And I'll remind you and tell you, I told you. I told you. Praise God. Our responsibility to the nations is big. God has spoken to Uganda things. Eh? People are going to want to be in Uganda. Our responsibility to the world is so big. So big. Praise the Lord. So big. So I am starting to pray constantly for many of you that you get the global vision of your ministry as individuals. The thing that transcends the boundaries that were drawn by the colonialists who just wanted to divide and rule. But these boundaries did not exist before. You understand what I'm saying? So, start thinking global. Because many of you are in a preparation what? Phase. It's the responsibility that we have towards the what? The world. It is so big. It is so big. Stop looking at your small myopic understanding of the gospel. Stop believing God for rent and fees. Embrace your ministry to the world. Embrace your ministry to what? To the world. The world is waiting for you. You understand? The world is waiting for us to give an answer, to give a solution, to give a story. Some of you, where we are going, it is going to be so big that it's going to be unimaginable. So, our responsibility to the world is what causes you to be an intercessor. Are you following me? That's why you pray for all men. That is why you pray for the saints. Because your responsibility goes to Russia, it goes to Germany, it goes to Uzbekistan, it goes to the coldest places in the poles, it goes to Belfast, it goes all across the world. It's a responsibility. Even in Uganda, you have a calling of God upon your life. If you have not understood this responsibility, you're going to make selfish prayer. You understand? But don't make selfish prayer. Make a prayer every time you go on your knees. Pray for the nations. Get a map. Are you hearing me? Speak to these nations individually. Tell them bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Respond to the story of the person of Christ. Bow. Listen. God, I thank you because you're sending forth men and women to revive these lands. How shall they know except the Lord give them a preacher? And you are available listening to these things every Sunday and you think you're going to stay no more. That is not possible. Of course, among us, 
There are some who will refuse that responsibility. There are some who will take the anointing on them light. There are some who will esteem the rock of our salvation lighter. There are some who are not going to give themselves and be given into this thing. But some of you, you're too consumed and it is too late for you to stand no more. It is just too late for you not to go out of this world. It's, it's not possible. It will never be possible. Somebody say, I receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say amen. Now, I'm speaking of the intercessor, the warrior. Of course, I've spoken about intercession before, but now I'm talking about the warrior, the prayer warrior. Let me show you the spirit of a warrior. The spirit of a warrior. According to the teaching of the gospel, not according to what you and I think, but according to the teaching of the gospel. Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 27. The Bible says, He who searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. He who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Look at that. A searcher of the hearts of men knows the mind of the spirit. Or when you know the mind of the spirit, the Lord reveals to you the hearts of men. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, knoweth the hearts of men and he has the full revelation of the mind of the Spirit. And the Bible says, as he is, so are you in this world. You understand? So are you in this world. You and Christ are one. You've been joined in unity of Spirit. So what he thinks is what you think. How he sees things is how you see things. He has the mind of the spirit and he knows the hearts of men. He that knows the hearts of men knows the minds of the spirit. You cannot know the minds of the spirit and not know the hearts of men because the mind of the spirit is the hearts of men. The mind of the spirit is toward men. The mind of the spirit is people. The mind of the spirit is to save men. The mind of the spirit is to heal men. The mind of the spirit is to deliver men. The mind of the spirit is to change men. The mind of the spirit is consecrating men. It's men and men and men. It's people and people and people. It's investing in people and people and people. It is you serving and serving and serving. It is you ceasing to be selfish and putting around yourself a little cocoon of myriad confusion to going out into the quadri of the world, the confusion in the world, and putting yourself at the center and take responsibility of certain people and take responsibility of certain lives. Get a man and stand and tell him why you're in your bed. Let's go to God. Let's go to the praise of God. Don't come alone. Don't come alone. Unless you don't understand your responsibility. Carry somebody and tell them, come to church. Let's go in the presence of Almighty God. I might not be able to articulate these things to you like I can, but I know somebody who can, and they speak the revelation of what I feel in my heart. I'm speaking your hearts, isn't it? I, you might not have the words that I'm speaking, but I'm speaking your hearts. Your hearts agree with what I'm speaking. You understand what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor, he that knoweth the hearts, knoweth the mind of the Spirit. Praise God. A searcher of the hearts of men has the mind of the spirit. You cannot understand how God works until you give yourself to serving men, to being available for men. You must serve. You must serve. You must serve. So I was saying that he that knows the mind of the spirit such as the hearts of men. And as you continue to know how the hearts of men respond, it guides the way you pray. And the Bible says you intercede for the saints according to the will of God. Intercession, prayer warrior, you must carry the mind, the revelation of the mind of the spirit when you search out to intercede for a person. And I've said this before, but I'm going to go a bit deeper into it in a few minutes to give you the intensity of what some of you have missed. Because the Lord told me, much as you've made these statements, some people don't pick them. Let me explain what I mean. You can't say I am interceding for Rhoda 
to God, when you don't know what Rhoda needs in her heart or the state of her heart, hmm? versus the mind of God. Those are the two things every intercessor should know. What is in the heart of Rhoda and what is in the mind of God? In the heart of Rhoda, there might be a problem and that problem cannot qualify her for the miracle. I'll give you an example. You ask and receive not because you pray amiss, because you want to consume it on your own lust. So Rhoda comes to me as an intercessor, but when they come to me to pray for them, they are lusty. You see? And Rhoda says, I want this. And so I get Rhoda and I go to God to, to speak to God about Rhoda's need. When Rhoda's state of heart is not right toward the thing she wants in God, will she be granted that petition? Answer me, will she be granted that petition? Why? Because she asks a miss. And I'm going to look foolish too, to be the intercessor of a person who does not know the will of God. Whose heart, sorry, is not revealed. Whose heart is not toward God. You, you see what I'm saying? Oh, apostle, I want a husband. Why do you want a man? I'm burning. Okay, besides burning, why do you want a man? I'm lonely. Okay, besides being lonely, why do you want a man? Then you check the heart of the person. And it's different. It's not the heart of a wife. And you tell him, look, we might be wasting our time talking to God until we deal with the state of your heart. For out of it flow the issues of life. The Bible says that Lord, God, Jehovah God, the Bible says he dealeth with every man according to their heart. God has given you to the degree of how your heart relates with him. He accords to every man according to their heart. Maybe you're struggling financially because of the state of your heart. Maybe you're struggling in your marriage because of the state of your heart. Maybe you're struggling in your business because of the state of your heart. Maybe you're struggling in your body because of the state of your heart. When you search this heart, you realize that out of it are the issues of life. You see, when the Bible speaks of David, for example, that he's a man after God's own heart, you will see the blessing on David's life. Eh? And why it's the temple he rebuilds in the end in the book of Revelation. And why he preserves the sons of David even in their wickedness. Because the man had a certain heart toward God. Some of you, if you weigh your hearts against truth, you're going to know why you are stuck. You're going to know why the Lord can't release certain things on you. There's a certain amount of money, some of you, the moment you get it. The moment you get a certain amount of money on the account, you will change. You will change. They will not even believe who you are. Some of it's those small things. But as we continue to teach the word, they die in the mighty name of Jesus. So, one, how do I know the state of my heart towards the thing that I'm asking God for? Do I want the anointing because... I also want to demonstrate like Apostle Emma demonstrates and my mom Odessa and Pastor Zach. Or do I want the anointing because I have understood the responsibility that comes with the anointing. Some of you don't know the responsibility. You're asking for things you're not ready to carry. <laughs> Until we show you our scars too. And you see the wounds that come with being anointed. And you see the stitches that come with being anointed. Until you see the marks. When Paul says, for in me I bear the scars of Christ. He doesn't say on me. It's not so much on what people did to us outside. It's what people did to us inside. Because we are servants of God. That's why he says, do not bring men which glory on the circumcision outside. For in me, he says, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord. In, not on, but in there, inside there. Some of you don't know what it means to bear the marks of Christ. You, you think it's just the outward cutting. No. Sometimes it's deeper than what you see on the flesh. No. There are things that go so deep inside. Because when you're a man of God or a woman of God, the more you respond to the anointing, the more vulnerable your heart is. And you can't save your heart from being vulnerable because it's the same vulnerability that defines brokenness. That broken and contrite spirit, the Bible says, which the Lord will not ignore. But the more broken you are, the more hurtful you can become. The more hurt you will become. 
Not because you're not thick-skinned. No, you can actually be so thick-skinned, but weak-hearted. Because God also needs the heart broken. Remember, he removed that heart of stone and gave you a heart of flesh. He knew that if you have a heart of stone, you will not serve him. But the very heart of flesh, the very heart of flesh, that's the in-body cuttings. That's where it begins from. That heart of flesh, it means it carries a body. And those are the marks Paul is talking about. The inward body of the heart. More than even the outward things that you will see. Some of these physical scars on our hands can heal. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, anoint me. Some of you don't know the responsibility that comes with the anointing. God anoint me. You ask what you don't know. It's not bad to be anointed. It's beautiful. You have fun. But <laughs> there's also another part of the anointing many of you will never know. It's good because you're given grace for everything, by the way. You understand? Eh? Some people don't know that it's the thing that took the Christ on the cross. To die for you and I. Responsibility. He wanted to live long. If it be possible, please take this cup of sorrow off me. But if it be your will, if, if it's your will, then do it. You see what I'm saying? Of course it was painful on the cross. But that could not be compared to the glory that is revealed. The light afflictions cannot be compared. That means it is something you would do over and over again because no pain can substitute the glory that comes with the anointing. That's why we don't exalt the pain because it's nothing compared to the glory, to the satisfaction you receive because of the anointing. That one, woo, it is beautiful. That's why you find Paul joying in his persecutions. He counts his soul but joy. You understand? Eh? He's in prison singing and praising God. You understand? It doesn't mean that he's not going through stuff. It only means that the glory on his life is way bigger than any chain. But there are chains. You, you understand what I'm saying? The only difference here is that the glory. The only challenge is going through all that pain and chains without glory. <laughs> Chivinho, praise God. Somebody suffer from me. <laughs> because there, there is no joy in that. That is affliction. That is demonic affliction. And some ministers suffer on that. Praise God. So, one, the heart of the person must be revealed, right? And then if the heart is right in what they request, then the mind of the spirit must be revealed. What is God's will pertaining what you are asking? Are you hearing me? You understand what I'm saying? Are you following? Now, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14. Wonderful scripture. He says, and this is the confidence of the prayer warrior, you and I, that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Remember when I was reading Romans? Huh? The Bible says that he intercedes for us according to the will of the Father. He just didn't pray for us. He intercedes for us according to the will of the Father. Are you following me? And this, John says then that this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything, 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 anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, whatsoever, anything, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. John chapter 5 verse 30. He says, I'm able, this is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus, the son of God speaking. He says, I am able, give me the amplified. He says, I am able to do nothing. Are you hearing me? from myself. This is the son of God saying that I'm able to do nothing from myself independently of my own accord. So it's not the choice of the intercessor on his own accord to pray for you. You've given too much power. You've given too much power to the intercessor. Whatever you say comes to pass. 
if he's aligned to the will of the Father. If he's out of the will of the Father, if he doesn't know the mind of the Spirit, neither designs your heart, don't be deceived that out of there, there's a magic wand, that magic stick, that I, I call it like a magic stick, like, like Gundy had. You, who was it? You remember Cinderella? How many remember the story of Cinderella? Put up your hand if you remember. Some people think that it's going to be like a Cinderella story, and then this fairy godmother, eh, intercessor, <laughs> eh, is going to come and just, you know, shake her stick, and then, and then, the big pumpkin is going to become a carriage and then you're going to put on a glass shoe and, and then you're going to go on the bow and then you're going to find the prince, uh, you know. Bananga, movies have spoiled people and that is why we are struggling in marriages and relationships. Recently I was sharing with a couple that was going to get married. I took them for dinner and I sat them down. So I was talking to them and I told them, look, almost 90% of the African brain has understood marriage through a European understanding. What it saw on the movies. You understand? What they see on the movies. You were young, they gave you Mills and Boone. You started reading what? Mills and Boone. Huh? People grew up watching television. Huh? They watched movies until your whole world on marriage is in that movie. What Julia Roberts did is what you do. How uh, Harrison Ford responded to a woman in the movie, it's what the boys are doing. How she, oh, you, you, oh, you, you don't even know where you got that nonsense from. Now our African girls, also them they've started. Your women started crying like white women. African women don't cry that way. No, this is Gentlemen, help me. They start to cry like white women. I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the movie, she saw a woman excited, and the woman was doing like this. Even them, they are doing when they get excited. <laughs> now, let me give you an opinion, an honest opinion. If you are a man and you're in this room and you don't like those things, put up your hand. No, African women don't do like this. No, 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 no. You just say thank you, sir. Then you go. I can't believe. No. Set a culture that white women should follow. Don't follow the culture of white women. It's on record. Every 37 seconds, divorce takes place in America. Every 37 seconds, the leading giver of the movies that are defining your love, the foundation of your marriages, every 37 seconds, Americans are divorcing. Every 37 seconds. But you're seeing it in a movie, they are pecking each other. Even you, you've also started it. You find a Christian in a restaurant pecking a girl. But because you saw it in a movie, you think that's what keeps love. I've never seen my father uh, pecking my mother, but are they married? You, how many of you have you seen your fathers kissing your mothers? You, how many have you seen? But are they married? Christians. It's okay to walk hand in hand, by the way. That one is okay. She can, you can hold your wife, eh? Hand in hand, you know. Put your hand there and tell her I'm you, my wife. That's okay. But some people have gone far. Public display of affection. You're copying it in the movies. Bye, honey. They, they, they put their faces over you. And then they walk away with copy 
been a divorcing. Go in Asia, India, where? Go in Arab nations. That nurses is not there and they are cooking up to 80. African women, you make your culture and white women copy you. But do you understand what I'm saying? Stop copying cultures that are not working. What is marriage? Banangi, what is marriage? What is marriage? How people don't know what marriage is anymore. They are copying the things, pasting, copying and pasting. Hey, recently, a couple, but me, I want those small things. Buy me a flower. What? African men don't love with flowers. If I bring a kilo of meat at home, woman, that is a flower. <laughs> interested in meat. Me buy me a flower. Banange, how much is a flower? How much is a kilo of meat? The man has come back with meat, chicken, rice, and you're asking for a flower. That is love. How long is a flower going to exist? Tulekenamwe. Let me tell you women. Hmm? Your husband, listen, the primary thing you need from a man eh, is the affirmation in your spirit that your husband loves you. And let me tell you, before the flowers come, he has to know how to talk to you. That's more important than the flowers. Because they can buy flowers on you and they slap you tomorrow morning. Are you hearing me? But the Bible says his words evoke her beauty. His words evoke. He's supposed to know how to talk to you before the flower comes. They would rather talk to you in a nice way and bring meat than bring flowers and talk to you a funny way. Isn't that so? What do I got your guys? I need the flowers. Back with flower, mama. So, I was saying, Jesus says, I myself can do nothing for myself independently. He says, of my own will and accordingly, I as I am taught by God. Listen, woo, woo, listen to Jesus. Jesus says, as I am taught by God, and I, as I get his orders. So the son of God, Jesus, 100% DNA, he needed the teaching of God in the flesh to teach him and give him, give him order. You see, the intercessor must pray as he has been taught by the will of God and ordered as the will of God states in scripture. And he says, and taught by God and as I get orders, even as I hear, he says, I judge, I decide as I am bidden to decide as the voice comes to me. So I give a decision. Don't make decisions when you have not had God and don't let people hear God for you except maybe for your man of God. If it's your man of God, me, me, my man of God can talk. Me, my man of God can talk. And I told my pastors that me, my man of God, if he speaks, I hear. Because God has trusted him, so I have to trust him. Simple. It's not even, I don't need mysteries. Eh? If God has trusted him with enough to teach me, trust him. If God has trusted your man of God, trust him. Simple. Don't tell me one for you. Does God trust me? Trust me. Simple. Don't you want you? Don't go up the heavens to look for God and under hell. Uh -uh. It's naive. The word is obvious, you know? But besides that, when somebody comes and tells me, I will not say, no, don't tell me. I'll hear. And then I go and seek the voice and say, God, what says thee about this matter? And God tells me, bury it. Mama, I'll bury it. I'll look foolish. But I told you, I told you, yes, you told me, but I haven't had God on an issue. Me, when I've not had God, eh, I don't move. I'm, I, mean, I told people, big ship turns slowly. You get it? Because there's a consequence when you make one decision. Some people have made decisions that are, are going to destroy many years of their lives, and they can't reverse them anymore. You know that? Some have made decisions in marriage and they're not going to reverse them. Some, some, some have made decisions in businesses and these decisions are... Ooh -wee. Now, Jesus says, this is the voice. He says, because I do not seek or consult my own will, I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, 
of my own aim or my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. That's why you pray and say, your kingdom come, your will be done on us. Now, why am I saying that? Intercession primarily is the mind of the spirit, right? The will of God pertaining a thing. That's what makes you a prayer warrior. You're not a prayer warrior because you have a prayer. Are you hearing me? You're not a prayer warrior because you have rented a room where you, yagababa, some person, shaka, shaka, and say, but no, that man is a prayer warrior. <laughs> James 1:18. He says, and it was his own free will. He willed it that he gave birth to us. He begot us as sons by his word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits. A kind, the, the literal word there for first fruits of his creatures is an example of how he works. It's just an example of how he works. And I'll teach on that one day. It's deeper than that. When you meditate it, readers of the word, go and meditate that scripture. But it was his will that he would make you a certain way. And he made you a certain way because he knew by his nature and your nature being alike, you'll pray a certain way. Somebody sent me a message sometime and told me, Apostle, things are happening in the ministry because the ministry walked away from the spirit of prayer. <laughs> how many of you pray for this ministry? Put up your hand. Now you see how foolish people are. So they think because we don't pray, like the intercessor they saw in high school, eh? they mean we don't pray. No, we pray. We just don't pray the way you think we should pray, but we pray. We are intercessors. We are warriors of our ministry. But we just don't wake up and say, some people think that you need to have an organized service for people to pray. That if you don't say, tomorrow evening we are praying, therefore we are not praying for the ministry. No, we are praying for the ministry. Every Thursday before service begins, men are praying on that altar. That altar begins service every day by prayer. You mean God doesn't honor that? You have a certain special understanding of how prayer should come? So, actually, don't worry. The person who sent me the message didn't come to this ministry. They don't actually come to this ministry. But they, for them, they saw from afar and told me, you have taken away prayer from the altar. You know, I didn't respond to the text message because I don't know how to answer such people. I would be disrespectful. They don't come to the ministry. They don't know the ministry. And they think that because we don't pray like certain people, therefore we are not interceding. No. Primary responsibility of the intercessor and the teaching is simple. Do I know the mind of God concerning Fanero? Yes. Do I know the will of God in the word? Yes. The moment I speak the mind of God and the will of God, I'm interceding. It's not the prayer mountain. Come on, somebody. It's not the valley. It's not the room. It's not the boiling room. It's not the underground. It's not the upper room. It's not the house of prayer. It's not what you're doing in that room. No, it's the revelation of the will of God and the mind of the spirit concerning a ministry. When you wake up in the morning and then you know that we are called for the world and you say, Father, thank you because Fanero is going across the world. That statement you have made for the ministry is covering many things. For example, can we go to the world when we are fallen? But when you say we are going to the world, you're revealing the will of the Father, the mind of the Spirit. You don't need to tell God, let us not fall. Let us not fall. Because it's always obvious that by the time we go to the world, we are not fallen. We are standing. That, you've made one prayer, but that prayer has covered many things. Because the Spirit of God knows better. And sometimes you don't even know how you ought to pray. But the Spirit prays through us, the Bible says. Making intercession, groaning in words we understand not. You might even not know what to pray for the ministry. But when you say, God, I'm praying for the ministry, and then you make a stand and say, Rabba ko si bakasa, God interprets it. You're intercessing. Thank you very much for praying for the ministry. So don't let any man rob you to make you think that you're not interceding because you're not praying the way they are praying. Some people say, they want to first get shake. Shake, shake. Fire, 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 fire. Ah, ah. But now that man can pray. So ask them, if we don't pray, why do we have results? Why do I just speak and the anointing comes? Why do I just make a statement and answers come through? 
Why do I prophesy and things come to pass? Why am I accurate if I don't hear God? I do. I just don't pray the way you think I pray. My altar is different because it's in revelation. It's not in tradition. I'll give you an example. Who in this room has ever found me praying? Put up your hand if you've ever found me praying. Who in this room has ever seen me pray? You don't want to see me pray. You don't want to. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm only saying it's deliberate that nobody knows my secret place. But don't you see that what is done in the secret manifests outward? I'm not a show off man. I won't wake up and start showing people how I pray a lot. No. But I know my God. I know my God. I know my God. I know my God and he knows me. I know how to talk to him. I know how he responds to me. I know when he tells me move. I know when he tells me keep quiet. I know when he tells me talk to this one. I know when he tells me don't talk to this one. I know my God. But I don't pattern my life according to the traditions of how men should pray. To think that I'm not praying. Of course, their days will have moments together. But those will be instructed by God. There are days I'll call you and say, let's come to pray together. Those are because they're instructed by God. If I don't call you, it doesn't mean that you're not praying. Or that the ministry is not praying. No. There are times, for example, in the 40 day fasts, we get together and pray. That's beautiful for us to pray. But if we don't get together, it doesn't mean that the ministry is not praying. Or that your prayer doesn't matter. Your one prayer makes the ministry. Pray. But pray according to the will. It's like, I'll give you this last example. I made a statement one time. And the Lord told me many people didn't get it. So let me probably help you according to this. I always say that you can't fight someone you're praying for. You know why? Because however wicked they are, you'll pray for them in the will of the Father. Who wills that no man perish, but that they might come to the knowledge of truth. You're going to pray for them in the mind of the Spirit. Does he want them to be destroyed? No, you're going to find that the man who annoyed you, when you go on your knees, you start saying, God, help them. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them for they know not. The Christ said it, Stephanos said it, and many people didn't understand that that was a testimony establishing the mind and will of the Father. He has made known unto us the mystery of his will. It's like when you're praying for a sick person. Don't say, ah, we are interceding for our dear sister. Heal her. Take her from the bed of sorrow. That, that is not intercession. What is the mind of God pertaining healing? What is the will of the Father pertaining healing? He said by his stripes you were healed. He paid the price. So when you're interceding for sister so and so in hospital, you don't pray, oh God, heal her. Visit her on a bed of sorrow. That's not an intercessor. That's a confused person. You can scream for hours and hours and you're not going to get answers because you're not praying in the revelation of the mind of the spirit. So you can't intercede in the will of the Father. This is how you pray. Thank you because sister Joyce is healed. That's an intercessor. One word spoken in truth is greater than a million spoken in deception. And some people think that a million words, a mouthful of words is intercession because they can spend countless hours in intercession. Why don't they have results if they pray? Why don't they have results if they pray? Why don't they have results if they pray? You mean God is skipping men who are praying to give results to men who are playing? That's not possible. Wake up and smell the coffee. There's a reason why many of you have never seen my place of prayer. And I deliberately hid it from men. And don't copy me because you might do it without revelation and stumble. Because I didn't want men to fashion themselves after my pattern. Because it was not about the pattern. It was the mind of the spirit and the will of the father that guides my heart. I can pray for hours. I can pray for two seconds. I can wake up and not pray. It's not about what I do for you to approve me. It's about what the spirit tells me. Because if I woke up, for example, and did not pray, that doesn't mean that I didn't meditate. And meditation is also a degree of prayer. In fact, it's fifth dimension. <laughs> meditation is fifth dimension. But because I'm seated quiet there in my office, and I'm not saying a thing, somebody's saying, e, this man is not praying. Because for you thinks praying is screaming. Scream and blow your brains out. Mutujeko tradition. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I'm not saying don't pray. I'm saying when you know your responsibility, you can't run away from prayer. I pray for all of you. I pray for all of you. All of you. All of you. Each one of you. 
I thank God for you always in my prayer. I thank God that they are going to be successful. I thank God that my kids are going to shine. I thank God that they're not going to fail. I thank God that they are more than conquerors by Christ. I thank God that they're doing signs, miracles, and wonders. Mighty exploits are yours. I thank God for you. I pray for you. I pray. I must pray for you. How can I not pray for you? I pray that he preserves you. I pray that you, that's why when Paul is praying for the church, he's always on knowledge. He's not praying about demons. Let them get husbands. Let them get wives. Deliver them from the generational curses. No, that the Lord of our Lord and Savior might grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you might know what is the hope of your calling, glorious riches of inheritance of the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of power that is at work within you, the same that you wrote when you raised Christ from the dead. That's the prayer of Paul. That's what I pray for you. That your eyes will be illuminated. He says that I pray that you might be strengthened in your inner man by the Holy Spirit. In all knowledge and utterance. I, those, that's my prayer for you because once you know the will of God, once you know the mind of the Spirit, then your life is on course. I don't need to call you. Some of you have called you for a special prayer. But that is because the Lord has led me. And don't feel less because I didn't call you. Uh-uh. You didn't need the call. No, you didn't need the call. You have enough faith not to receive a call. You have enough faith to tap it before I call you. Thank God for your maturity. They are also not immature because I called them. Maybe they also needed that call because they needed a specific prophetic word. They are not immature. It's just words come as they do. Like sometimes I wake up, I call names and I pray for you. But it's out of meditation. You think when I say at, in the morning, God showed me. In the morning, God showed me. Last week, God showed me. You think I was just sitting there and God started showing me. No. When I enter into the spirit of intercession, I know your hearts. Like I knew the woman who was not sleeping the whole night. The Lord showed me her pain and told me that God is not sleeping. Tomorrow, first thing before you preach, get that thing out of her body. That's what they call an intercessor. Praise God. Like I've dealt with those who have had miscarriages. It was God spoken to me. That's how we do it. It is well with you. It is well with you. So I'm not saying also you hide away from people. But I'm cautioning some of you who pray to be seen. I'm cautioning some of you who pray to be seen. You remember how they make loud prayers in the markets that men will praise them. And the Bible says... Once you start doing it with the attitude, it's okay to be fond praying, but it is wrong for you to pray so men will hear you or see you pray. You understand what I'm saying? The Lord who sees you in the secret, the Bible says he will reward you openly. Everybody in this ministry is a prayer warrior, but prayer warrior is the revelation of the mind of the spirit, the will of God and the hearts of men. If you don't understand that, don't say you're an intercessor. You're offending in the spirit. Somebody raise your hands and thank God. In the secret, the quiet place, in the stillness you were there. Oh, in the secret, the quiet hour will only for you cause I want to know you know I want to know you I want to hear your voice I want to know you more. I want to touch you I want to see your face I just want to give us three minutes Just speak in tongues I am reaching for the highest goal Speak in tongues Should a little boast That I might receive the prize Prison on word Pushing every hindrance aside out of my way Cause I want to know you more I want to know you I want to hear your voice I want to know you more To touch you, 
power to see your face. I pray that God grant you the grace to be the warrior that you are. You're going to do great. You're going to take responsibility. You have a great responsibility and calling on your life. And no doubt you cannot fail. You cannot fail. You will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.